This is the story of a soldier who operates your nation's Patriot Missile Defense Systems. It begins in California with a little girl raised by two moms. Although I had a fairly typical childhood, took ballet, played violin, I also marched for equality. I like to think I've been defending freedom from an early age. When I was six years old, one of my moms had an accident that left her paralyzed. Doctors said she might never walk again, but she tapped into my family's pride to get back on her feet, eventually standing at the altar to marry my other mom. With such powerful role models, I finished high school at the top of my class and then attended UC Davis, where I joined a sorority full of other strong women. But as graduation approached, I began feeling like I'd been handed so much in life, a sorority girl stereotype. Sure, I'd spent my life around inspiring women, but what had I really achieved on my own? One of my sorority sisters was studying abroad in Italy. Another was climbing Mount Everest. I needed my own adventures, my own challenge. And after meeting with an army recruiter, I found it. A way to prove my inner strength and maybe shatter some stereotypes along the way. I'm U.S. Army Corporal Emma Malone Lord, and I answered my calling. I used to watch helicopters over my backyard in Hawaii. My dad was an army officer, so we lived on base. I loved hearing them start up and take off. Coolest thing in the world. But I knew I could never be a pilot. I wasn't like them. I never considered myself to be a smart person. I struggled to keep up in class. Subjects like math and Spanish were so hard for me. Growing up, my mother was in and out of the hospital for nearly a decade before she passed away. My older brother Rob helped to raise me. He eventually followed my father's footsteps into the army and I wanted to as well, just not as a helicopter pilot. Then, during a long road trip with Rob, he told me to pursue my true dream. But I'm not pilot material, I said. Rob was done listening to my excuses. So finally, I decided to stop making them. I gave myself permission to dream and refocused my life around this goal. Training myself to pay attention, visualizing myself in the cockpit of an army helicopter. I even created something called a vision board, listing my goals. I had little chance to achieve them all, but I gave my all and made them happen. It doesn't take a genius to become an army pilot. It takes time and effort. Now, every time I put my helmet on, I feel like I'm dreaming. And I can't imagine doing anything else. I'm U.S. Army First Lieutenant David Taguchi, and I answered my calling.
Back in Haiti, I used to walk miles down unpaved roads to school every day. So when my family had the opportunity to move to Florida, it opened my eyes to a new world. A world that I would one day want to defend. Being a first generation immigrant, I was amazed by what was normal in the US. Simple things like well-kept grass and smooth roads were a huge deal. Seeing my parents succeed in this world was humbling, showing me that hard work and determination goes far. I didn't realize how far it would eventually get me. I initially joined Junior ROTC to get out of gym class, but it was much different than I expected. It was actually more physically demanding and disciplined than gym, and I even had to wear a uniform. But something about it was more interesting. It was empowering to feel like a part of a team, and I started taking it more seriously than I ever expected. But it was one day during a 9-11 ceremony, I started seeing the Army in a new light. Over 3,000 students lined the walls and the balconies of my school. My whole community was there, including firefighters and service members from every military branch. The silent show of respect for this country was deafening. I was now determined to defend this nation that I called home. And to not only be a citizen, but a soldier as well. I am U.S. Army First Lieutenant Ricky Pasir, and I answer my calling. My siblings and I watched my dad try to take his own life right in front of us. The police were called and they rescued him. I grew up wanting to help people like my father, people who are suffering. My parents were first generation immigrants from the Dominican Republic. We shared a three bedroom apartment in New Jersey with 10 family members. With my dad's struggles, my mom had to work 16-hour days. So I helped any way I could. My neighborhood was tough. My friends got into a lot of trouble. I wanted to fit in. One time, I snuck out and stayed three days at a friend's place. When I came home, Mom wanted to teach me to appreciate the life I had by sending me to the Dominican Republic to stay with relatives for a year. I had no idea what to expect. My relatives lived in a house with a tin roof. Tourists used to drive by and throw candy at us. Once on a school field trip, I missed the bus back, completely stranded, and a stranger went out of her way to help me get home. I remember thinking, no matter what, there are always good people in the world. And when I returned to the US, I knew I had to be one of those good, helpful people. I just didn't know how. One day at school, I came upon an army recruiter and told him about my goals. He took me through all their different careers and that's when it hit me. The army is an army of good people. I knew what to do. Now I serve in a combat support hospital, doing what fulfills me the most. I'm U.S. Army Specialist Jennifer Liriano, and I answered my calling. La da 
My singing voice took me all over the world. But no matter how far I traveled, how many things I experienced, I kept returning to a feeling inside. I grew up in an army family. My dad, uncles, and both of my grandfathers served. So as soon as I turned 17, I asked for my dad's blessing to enlist. But having served in the army during the Vietnam era, responding to civil unrest, he said no. He had his reasons. So I turned to singing. First on the strip in Vegas. Then after a performance at the Apollo Theater in New York, I was invited to sing for a top cruise line where I spent five years traveling everywhere, over 70 different countries, witnessing the good and also the bad in the world. Places torn apart by political unrest, people suffering. Our ship was once turned away after a port had been bombed. When I was 17, I, I had such real big dreams. I said, Dad, I want to be a soldier so I can be like you. And though the years have passed now, feeling just seems to last now. It's not too hard to grasp now. Hey, Dad, I gotta feel like you. Dad came around, and now I've turned my desire to serve into an Army career and two master's degrees. And I still find time to perform for my fellow soldiers. I'm U.S. Army First Lieutenant Janine Phelps, and I answered my calling. <laughs> 